Hey you all, Muscle High to Fellow Dressmakers. You are welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. In this video, I'll be showing you how to cut this beautiful milk made flare dress with basque waistline and puff sleeves. So if you want to see how I came up with this beauty, make sure you watch this video to the very end. And thank you to all my returning viewers. You guys are wonderful. And if it's the first time on this channel, now we'll be drafting the upper part first and i have the pattern for both front and back already laid on my table like so i have the bust point under bust waistline and the hip line even though we'll not be needing that hip line but let's leave it there okay now what i'm going to do is to come over to this hip line and mark my bust pan measurement i'm using three and half and i'll mark that all the way to the bust point and i'll connect it like so Next, I'm going to come to this waistline and mark 0.75 on both uh, sides of the bust pan line. And that would give me one and a half. I'll come to the under bust and use 2 inches to tighten the under bust. Now, what I like to do is to mark 1.25 on this side and 0.75 on this part. Okay? So, if you know what to use to do, tighten your under bust, just go ahead and do it. For me, over time, I've noticed that I use 2 inches to tighten my under bust. Now I'm going to curve it to the bust point like so and then extend it that to the waistline and also to the hip line like you see me do here. The next thing I'm going to do is to come up here by 3 and half, which would serve as our over bust line. Okay, and then I'll connect it like so. Next, I'm going to extend the dart and to do it the proper way, I'm going to come over here and mark my standard neckline measurement and then do my shoulder slope of 1 and half. Okay. To make it easy, just draft your uh, basic bodies. Next, I'm going to start measure from that armhole line to the neck tip, neck line, and then whatever I have there, I'm going to divide it by two and use that to connect it to the dart on the bust point. To tighten the over bust, I'm going to mark half inch on both sides and then I'll curve it like so. Can you see that? I use um, half inch on both sides. You can decide to do more, especially if you are busty, but one inch is okay for me. Next, I'm going to take my bust measurement divided by four and then I'll connect it like so. You see. Next, go ahead and blend this part. If you have a curve, you can use it. But if you don't have a curve like me, go ahead and use a free hand to just blend it to the uh, I'm hook of it's that simple now come to this center front yeah and then mark, come down by half inch and that would be the depth of the neckline then I'll come over to the under bust here and mark one inch up you can decide to do more if you want okay then I'll take my waist measurement then we'll go over and complete the under bust curve okay I will also take my hip measurement divided by four plus half inch which i would be telling you why later then i will use this curve like so to connect it now come over to this under bust on this side front here and then go up by half inch first you're going to connect this uh this uh, center front then you go over to the side front and connect it like that it's that simple by the time i measure it from the neckline to that point you see that i have five inches which is very okay for me now go ahead and uh, connect this that here and it will sum up to half inch which is why we added half inch to our hip measurement divided by four we do not even need all of that but let's just do it for doing sake now for the basque i'm going to come to this waistline i'm come down by four inches Please, if you want exactly what is on the, on the thumbnail, do not exceed 2 or 3 inches from your natural waistline. You can see that I even came down by 1 inch from my natural waistline and that is 17 inches total. That is how I want it, okay? If you want exactly what you see on the thumbnail, just from your natural waistline, you are going to come down 3 inches or 2 inches and then you connect it like that. Now let's go to the back. I'm going to do the neckline. I'm using three inches by one and a half, even though we do not need that. 
and for the shoulder slope i'm using one inch then i will connect it like that now let's go ahead and tighten the center back i usually <laughs> do this in most of my tutorial i, sh I show you how to tighten your under uh, your center back normally you're supposed to use this right you usually use this not you're supposed now let me show you the difference if i use this curve i'm going to use this curve now to tighten the center back like so remember from my waistline is i came in by one inch okay then you use this curve to connect it like so can you see the reason for this is that you tighten your underboss for the front but what happens to the back now if you do this you notice that you avoid or eliminate unnecessarily um bulge after you have must have fixed your zipper okay just try this and let me know what you think or how it goes so next i'm going to start from this new line and mark my boss band measurement then i will mark what i have there from the previous line then whatever i have there i'm going to use that to mark it at this down part here the length of the dart is actually 12 inches so 6 inches from the waistline up and 6 inches from the waistline down um this is pretty fast because i'm not here to show you how to draft the basic bodies i have a tutorial on that on my channel already you can uh, do where to check it out okay next i'm going to start from this center back tightening center back tightening line at, and take my bust measurement divided by four my waist measurement divided by four and then the hip measurement divided by four and connect it like so next i'm going to curve the armhole we are almost done and if you notice the center at uh, the waistline for both front and back is the same i just want to do it for this particular tutorial it's been a while i did that <laughs> And the next thing I'm going to do is to measure from the shoulder tip to the um my overboard for the front and whatever I have there, I'm going to mark the same thing at the back because I want both the front and back neckline to be the same. Okay, then I'll connect it like so. Yes, I'm going to measure what I have here, and if it's up to my shoulder measurement divided by two, I'm going to minus one inch. But since it's no longer up to seven inches, I'm going to mark six inches here. From that center back tightening okay um whatever you have as your, as your shoulder measurement divided by two i'm going to minus one at the back for this particular tutorial it's important that you do that minus one from your shoulder measurement divided by two and then you connect that to the armhole like so i've also added my zipper allowance for the back following the curve that i have there Next, I'm going to measure what I have from this neckline to the shoulder slope line. And whatever I have, I'll measure the front and add it together. I have 5.5 for the back and 6 inches for the front, which is 11 and a half. That would, would be what you, that would be what you use to measure out for the sleeve. We'll get to that, but just have that in mind, okay? Now, I'm going to take a fresh pattern or paper and place it under like so mine is double but you don't have to make yours double i just want to leave it double like that i'm going to take my tracing wheel but if you don't have a tracing wheel uh, use your pencil you just have to apply some pressure and trace out everything you have here from this under under boss particularly go ahead and trace it out if you have your tracing wheel fine but if you don't have if you use your pencil and you know apply some uh, pressure it's going to reflect on the a fresh pattern you know plain pattern and then after that you're just going to trace it out like you see me doing here and that is it so we'll be using this now to cut out for the milk made which i'll be showing you later on in this video but for now go ahead and cut it out like so and keep it aside so this is what it looks like after you can see that i i also included the that you know this part that will be cutting out it's also included there next i'm go just going to cut it out like you see me doing here i'll first cut out the bust to the under bust part and then from the under bust to the waistline next i'll cut out for the back and i don't, don't want to sew any that for this dress so i'm go just going to close it on the pattern before i transfer it to my fabric okay 
now for this part i'm also going to close the dart and it's very much simple go ahead and fold one part of the dart line and then place it on the other one then you're going to use your masking tape or silver tape whichever one you want to use and tape it down like so okay next we are going to redraw this line let's go ahead and make it smooth like you see me doing here can you see that and then of course we cut it out now we are going to transfer all of this pattern to our fashion fabric but before that you remember i said i came down from my natural waistline for the front one inch i forgot to do that for this back so for it to be the same I'm just going to come down by one inch here too and then connect it to the back okay please do where to ignore this part I, will, I said this before that if you want exactly what is on the thumbnail make sure to just leave it at your natural waistline like that but like I said I have my reason for doing this and having done with the pattern we'll go ahead and transfer the patterns to the fabric and I'll be using this beautiful brush pink fabric I got it as well that's why it is rumpled I was ironing it before they took light and I couldn't wait for them to bring the light. So we'll go ahead with the cutting anyway. And what I have here, I have about um two and quarter. Yeah, about two yards and 12 inches. And the material is by 60. Okay. So if you want yours fuller, please make sure you use at least three years of fabric. Now what I'm going to do first is to cut the flare before we cut the other part. I'm going to fold the whole yardage like so. Just fold it into two like so. Then I'm going to take the tip like that and fold it like so. Just like you want to cut a 270 flare. Okay. Now I'm going to arrange it like so. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to keep my full length measurement there. And then come up to my half length. That is plus the hemming allowance just my full end there and i will mark instead of marking 17 i mark 16 inches here then i'll measure from the tip there to that 16 inches and whatever i have there i'm going to mark it all around like so you know how to cut your flare right you can decide to do this down part straight you know just gather as if you want but i want it flare like so okay now i'm going to measure what i have around there to make sure it's at least up to my waist measurement and of course i have my waist measurement times two there so i'm going to measure from that um radius to the full length and whatever i have there i'm going to use that to measure round here as the full length i don't know if you understand but go ahead and cut a flare or just uh, cut out your length as straight from from the fabric just to do gathers okay now this is what i have i'm going to open this part because i want to add pockets and i don't want to stress myself so i'll just go ahead and open it up here i won't be opening it all the way to the down and then on this part too i'm going to take one i'll first notch and then i'll take i will open one this note i said one i'm going to open one so that i I have one on fold so this part that i open now will be the zip area yeah the center back okay now for the sleeves i'm going to mark the length here as 11 inches and then i will start from this tip again just like we did for the flare i'm going to measure around what i have there and then from here i'm just going to mark 11 inches just so i do not waste any of this fabric we are managing fabric right so i'm going to mark it round like that and then cut it out so you saw my sleeve is not that full if you want yours fuller i said you should use three yards of fabric or even four depending on how full you want the skirt or the sleeves to be now what i'm going to do here is to come down here by three and a half which is what i would have used for my normal sleeve curve I hope you understand that so if you use four inches go ahead and mark three and half so that you use the other half for joining then I'll, i'm going to just connect it to the other part like that 
so that by the time you are done with, the, with your sleeve, it will not be dropping at the armhole area. I hope you understand what I'm tra trying to say. After that, I'll use it to trace out for the second one and then we'll go over to the front pattern. Now, what I'm going to do is to extend on the waistline and on that bust, I will extend the line there and then mark one and a half allowance there and connect it like so. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for this um bust and under bust part one and a half allowance and then then i will connect it like so um every other place will be half inch joining allowance just as you can see me do here so i'll go ahead and trace it all out like so adding half inch joining allowance i already have my one and a half at the side right so every other place like i said will be half inch joining allowance I would do the same thing for this other part. If you're a beginner, it's important that you just mark it out so you have a uniform allowance. And now for the milkmaid, this pattern, I'm going to take it like this, measure it like so, and then I'm going to mark one inch intervals like so. And then I'll rule it out. It's very much simple. If you, you can do one and a half if you want, but this one inch is okay. This part that looks like half inch is because that part will be on full. So by the time you open it, it will also be one inch. Then I'll go ahead and label it and indicate the part that will be going up. Then this part, I also marked it so that I will know I'll put it on full. This is important, especially if you do not sew your pattern or um, transfer it to the fabric the same day you cut the pattern or drag the pattern. So if you do it this way, it will be easier for you to know what you did. Now, I'm going to take a fresh pattern, a brown paper like so. Then I will mark half inch on this part here and tape it down. The first one, then I'll take the second one. I'll mark one inch away from the first one and tape that one down too. I'll repeat the same thing, one inch and then I'll tape it down. Make sure it's... You know, it's really from a, a the upper part and down part. You know the shape that you cut out, right? Just go ahead and do it like that. So I, I use the same process to um, tape all of them down. And then I'm going to mark it all out like so. Then after cutting, while cutting, I'll be adding half inch at the upper part and down part. And just like we did for the other pattern, I'm going to add my one and a half inch allowance, inches allowance. Make sure I have the same thing. Uh, that allowance area then like i said i'm going to cut half inch joining allowance there and the pattern is ready ignore whatever thing you're seeing there because i already used this pattern for something else now let's transfer this to the fabric and i want to show you another method you can use for this especially for those who hate um slash and spread method I'm going to measure what I have on this pattern here. This is center front, right? And this is side front. I'll measure what I have on the pattern paper only. And then I'll times that by two. Whatever I have there, I'll times that by two and mark it there. Now I'm going to shift this side front to that point that I marked. The pattern paper is exactly on that part that I marked, okay? And then I'm going to shift this one to giving a space for this um, folded part, okay? Then I'm going to cover whatever I have on the pattern there too on this plain fabric i'll measure what i have here and mark the same value i have there here too and use it to curve this one to that point so whichever one you want to do either this or the slash and spread method just go ahead and do it it will give you the same result just make sure the pattern paper is on that part that you marked and then you're going to cut it all out cut the allowance too but since you already cut out the stretch and spread method, I'm just going to use it to trace out on this fabric like so. And I notice that it's the same with the other method that I showed you. The white pattern paper stopped exactly on that part that I marked for the other method that I showed you. So I told you it's the same effect. Just choose your struggle carefully. Now let's go ahead and start joining all of these pieces together. <music> 